Hi everybody, Ben here from Atlas Ordinary. So, I am going to do, I don't normally do um, round or rectangle canvases, so I've decided to do this, um, sorry, I normally do a rectangle, I don't normally do round or triangle or hexagon. So this is, I'm pretty sure a hexagon. So it is six inches, um, six inch canvas. And I'm going to do a pearl pour, dirty pour um, that I do using extreme sheens in pink tourmaline, copper, and 24K gold. So they actually look quite good together. I was trying to think of what colours, and um, they actually seem to pair up quite well. And there's going to be on a purple base. So I'm hoping to get a nice assortment of different pearls come through. So with the Extreme Sheen, I used 8 grams paint and 8 grams um, Australian Floetrol. Then I made the base. I could have too much paint here. I don't know. I haven't tried... I haven't done this canvas, so I don't really know how to measure how much paint I need. But I used 40 grams paint, 80 grams Floetrol, and 13 grams water to make it a bit thinner than the other paints. But it's not super thin. It is winter here, so everything stays a little bit thicker. So this is my plan. I did paint the canvas. It's not completely dry, but I'm hoping it just doesn't leave me with, um, um, like the paint doesn't kind of got on the edges as good as it should. I probably should have let it dry and do a second coat, but I don't have time. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to get my popsicle stick out. Now we want to pour about two-thirds of this cup onto the canvas. Yeah, definitely got a lot of paint, but that's fine. So I've got about one-third left in here. Now, with this, we just want this to cover as much of the canvas as possible. I often use my palette knife and spread it out that way. But I think this time I'm just going to tilt it until it mostly covers all of it. Because I've already painted the edge. I just kind of want this to be a flow extender as such. Can't see where the weight of the paint is at the moment. It's up there for some reason. It's probably as close I'm going to get it before I go over the edge. Oops, there it was. Sometimes I can't actually see where the weight of the paint is, but we'll get it back to roughly the middle. <clears throat> now we've got the last one third in this cup. So then what we want to do is we want to pour these in as a dirty pour. So we want them to land in quite heavily into the cup. So I'm just going to pour it from a height. I decided I'm going to do this in half, 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 and then go back and do a second one. Just always gives you metallics a quick little stir before you pour them in, just so they haven't settled. So again, from a height, pour that down and just let it smash into that cup into this base colour. I'm really excited about using the pink tourmaline with the um, other two, the copper and the 24K gold, because I think it's actually going to come out quite cool. Now, just going back to the copper. Pour that from a height, let it smash down in. Right. 
So you get most of it in as a dirty pour, but the last little bit always sits on top because it's not heavy enough to smash down into the paint. But that's fine. That's how it always works for me. Then we go back to the 24K. So you don't have to do this in two stages. If you want to just pour the whole lot in in one layer, you can do that. I just find I usually do it as two. It gives me a little bit better assortment of um, cells or pearls that come up. So again, from a height, smash it down into the other And then we just scrape out the rest. Okay. Now we've got that in there. It's already starting to make reactions in the cup. Now I'm just going to kind of pinch it. It's a plastic cup, so it's not going to make a proper spout. I should have used a paper cup, but um, I didn't have one at the time. So just going to pour it as a dirty pour straight down into the center from a decent height because we want it to kind of smash down into itself. And then I stopped it with my finger when it wasn't smashing down anymore now just going to centralize this this is going to be full of bubbles so two things we have to do now is let this settle a little bit i don't want to tilt it much i'm just trying to centralize it we need to get these bubbles out so Trusty little blow torch. I'm going to go over the whole canvas, but the background doesn't have a lot of bubbles in it. It's mostly this um, dirty pour part I've done. So for now, what I have to do is, I have to let this settle down and get more of these cells and that to come up in this midsection. So I'm not gonna tilt it yet. Um, if I start tilting it, I'm just gonna pour off a lot of this and I'm not gonna get as much in the center. I want more stuff to happen in here before I start tilting. So what I would do is I'll pause it I'm going to leave this for a good five minutes, um, torching it every probably two minutes just to make sure I've got all the bubbles out before I start tilting. And we'll see what has come up between now and in five minutes time. So pausing it and we'll be back soon. Okay, we're back. So as you can see, it spread itself out and more um, cells have automatically come up, but not tons. I think when I poured it into the base paint, um, it sat on top a little bit more instead of sinking. So that's why there's a fair bit more gold or metallic around the outside. But that's okay. And it's starting to drip off the edges, which means I need to probably start tilting. So there is a lot of paint. So I'm not going to have to do a lot of tilting, but we'll see how I go depending on composition. So all we need to do is just move it around a little bit, figure out where the paint is, and then we're going to go over some sides. Being hexagon, I have to go all the way over the corners. So there's that one. Now I'm going to come down this way, 
over that one. Did it cover those? Yes. Now over to this side. Up this way. So I am losing some of those cells, but I have to go over those edges. It's one thing I cannot handle is when the paintings don't go over the actual edges. And then this one. Now that we've done that, it's looking a little bit plain. So I'm going to move the paint around, but I do think I may have to tilt a bit more paint off. I just don't know which spot yet to tip it off from. If I go this way, I'm going to stretch out this gold, but I'll lose that copper. But I don't think I have much of a choice. I think that's going to be the best direction for me to go. So I'm going to tilt off this way and really stretch out this side. So I think I just had too much paint. So yes, I do look like I'm tilting a lot off. If it doesn't look any good, you can always just repaint over it. That's the best thing about artworks. You get to pick and choose how you want it to be. So I'm stretching it quite a fair bit. I need to get that middle part off which would have been where there wasn't much metallic left okay so the only thing by stretching it a lot like that is it has changed the gold color it's depending on the angle it's actually looking more copper it's definitely a mixture of copper and gold together so now I'm just stretching the paint back a little bit. By moving the paint around, it is gonna cause some friction and bring up some more cells. But I did lose a lot of metallic, like you can see the, the base, a lot of metallic has come off. And being a hexagon, you actually can hang this in so many different angles depending on what you think looks best. So, there's not a lot of movement now. But it is bringing up some cells over there and over here. And that's creating, that's by mostly the friction of the paint moving and the metallic underneath pushing its way around. I really like this actually. I hold it, when I tilt it one way I see gold and when I tilt it back the other way I see copper. So I'm quite happy with those colours. And let me check my sides. Yeah, I'm fully covered over the edges. That's what I like. I, I don't always like to add paint to the sides afterwards, especially with this type of pour because you can't get that same pattern to flow. I'm just running my fingers underneath and just getting all those drips off because they will continue to pull paint off if you let it. Now, I touched that canvas with my other finger just on the side. Okay, now, 
lots of metallics, I can do multiple things. I can just leave it there. If I poured this over um, a piece of plastic or a silicon mat, then you can use that as skins. Um, or, which I have done quite a few times, is I've scooped it up with my palette knife and either poured it onto um, little wooden shapes or um, like a coaster. I wonder if I've got a spare coaster. I do. So I've just got a wooden coaster here. So I'm actually going to scrape up a lot of that metallic. And again, if this doesn't look any good, you just pour over it. Sometimes it's just fun to see what you actually get. I'm gonna get paint all over my fingers. And as we're doing this, you can see more pearls developing on the main canvas. As it sits, it will develop more over, depending, because it's winter, it will probably take about half an hour to develop more. If it was summer, it would probably only take about um, 15 minutes. I don't think this coast is going to be anything fantastic, but we'll let it dry and see what it looks like. A couple of bubbles there I was trying to pop. I'm just going to get one of these cups that I use to pour on, pour out of, put it upside down and chuck that coaster on top. And just don't bring your hands over the top of your canvas, you will get drips on it. I like, I quite like the shape. Definitely getting some nice colours coming through. I can see all three colours. The the berry has probably come out a little bit more ready because it's mixed with the copper. Sorry if my voice is a bit funny. My nose is a bit stuffy and it's making me sound a bit funny. Okay, so I reckon what I'll do is I'm going to pause this for a little bit and see what else develops in this and we'll come back. Because you can see the cells have developed here, here and even throughout some more cells are popping up and doing different effects. So we'll come back and we'll see what happens soon. Okay, we are back. So hope you guys can actually see the colours. So they really have blended together. Down this end here, it's a little bit more um, earthy colours where the copper and the um, pink tourmaline have mixed together with a bit of gold in it. And then down this side, it's more gold, but the other colours are in there as well. So it's really, really cool, especially when I move the angles of the lighting, it changes a little bit. It kind of looks a little bit interference from um, my perspective. So I'm going to bring you down for a close up and show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is it from my angle. 
and let's come down. See how this side's kind of got the red, earthy kind of tone to it with gold in it? It's hard to explain, but then the same spot you can kind of see the gold on a different angle. Really nice cells. The metallics have taken over most of it, but there's enough negative space to kind of make those other colours pop. You can see all those cells that have popped up. So these bigger ones are the ones that initially popped up. And then these smaller ones are the ones that pushed through later on by moving it back and forth. And they do have different kind of feels about them. I'm trying to show you how the color changes a bit. It's hard to do it through the camera. But there you go. I really think this is quite cool. I'm really happy with it. Um, it should dry very much similar to how it is. The cells may grow a little bit more as it dries, but I don't think they're going to do too much more. This is that little coaster I did, just by adding the extra paint onto it. It's nothing fancy, but um, if it doesn't dry nice, then um, I'll just paint over it again. But yeah, so... Let me know what you think. So comment, like, share and subscribe if you haven't already. And um, I'll see you soon for another pour. And have a good night. Okay, thanks everybody. Bye.